Okay, so uh, we're just going to start our next our next talk now uh, by uh, Fernando Dominguez Salvador from uh, Everest. He's a digital experience manager, um, and Fernando's going to be talking about Liferay as a headless CMS. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Okay. So, um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to share with you. Um, the results of uh, one project we did uh, this year, uh, where, as you as you can see, our objective was using library as a headless CMS for delivering content to uh, virtual reality and augmented reality environments. So, first of all, really, really, really fast, let me present myself. Uh, my name is Fernando Dominguez. As it has been said, I work uh, uh, at Everis uh, as a digital experience manager. I've been working. Uh, forever is for almost 13 years, so quite a lot, always related to the digital experience area. So basically uh, helping our clients to define and, uh, and, and put in place uh, digital solutions for uh, websites, uh, mobile applications, lately uh, virtual reality as we will be seeing today. Okay. This is, this is uh, more or less the topics we will be covering uh, during the session. Uh, please feel free to stop me at any point. Uh, if you have any question? I know we will have some questions uh, at the end, but if you if you want to stop me at any point, uh, please do it. No problem with that. Okay. So first of all, we'll review some uh, uh, let's say uh, cases of real use of virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, so somehow a review of the state of the art uh, in both these uh, both technologies. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about okay, which are the business challenges uh, we are facing uh, with the uh, approach for these uh, new uh, technologies. And finally, I will share with you uh, uh, what we have built, which basically is a, a virtual uh, product catalog, uh, uh, which, as we will see, uh, is using Liferay in order to retrieve the contents and, and just showing them in a virtual reality environment. So let's go. Uh, I, I wanted to start. Uh, uh, sharing with you uh, this, uh, you, you will for sure remember of that uh, if you've seen the, the, the film The Matrix, uh, where Morpheus asks, "Okay, have you ever had a dream?" It, virtual reality, in fact, is really related to that, to, to dreaming, right? So at the end of the day, the objective is trying to put uh, the user in a parallel reality in order to ex ex experiment and experience. Uh, 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 with uh, this, this parallel reality, right? If you think about it, it's, it's really, really, really powerful. So it's related with the, the limits are, are um, basically our imagination. It's like having a dream, right? So you are, you are having a dream, you don't know you are having a dream. It's really, really real during that period, it's real for you. Uh, you don't know you're in a dream, right? So the, the objective of virtual reality, augmented reality, is somehow tied to this uh, uh, way uh, we have of dreaming, right? Um, I'd like to ask you, uh, uh, could you just raise your hands, uh, if you have any idea on where, in which decade, decade uh, was the first uh, virtual reality device uh, uh, invented or, or, uh, or appeared in the, in the market? You know, would you say 80s? 80s, 70s, uh, 60s, nobody. <laughs> okay, so it's it's uh, when you think about it, obviously it's a, it's a, a quite uh, an interesting topic which uh, is is uh, generating lots of discussions in the late years. But most of the people don't know that the actually the first uh, that could be called virtual reality device was designed in the in the 50s. Uh, it, never, it never got into production, so it never got sold, let's say, right? But they did a prototype, which is some, this thing you can see here. Um, it was quite interesting because it, it was already uh, dealing somehow uh, with the technology they had at, the, at, uh, at that point with uh, 3D, uh, wide vision, uh, motion, uh, even they, they said wind and, and vibration. So it, it was pretty, pretty, pretty advanced uh, to what they had uh, at that point. After that, obviously, uh, there's been a lot of progress, right? So in the, in the 60s is where we, where we 
uh, that the first uh, head mounted virtual reality display uh, uh, was put in place. And then afterwards, uh, mid 90s, uh, Sega started investing in this, in this area and created uh, one, uh, let's say, more advanced virtual reality glasses, right? Uh, also as a, as a head mounted display. After that, and we will see later, obviously, uh, a lot of, of hype related to virtual reality, a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, devices there in the market. Before we go to there, uh, I'd like to explain a little bit the, different, uh, the differences between virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. Okay? It's not obviously the same, uh, but there are slight differences between, between the three of them. <laughs> virtual reality. Uh, which is the, the, the most, uh, let's say, basic one, right? So basically the idea is generating uh, uh, parallel reality, computer-generated computer reality, which is really immersive, which uh, engages the user uh, basically by uh, their hearing and vision, but also potentially uh, with other senses like uh, touch, smell, and, uh, and even taste, okay? So at the end of the, end of the day, is we are generating a uh, uh, parallel reality uh, for the users to feel that they are like in a different world, right? So at the end of the day, as I was saying before, it's like dreaming, right? That's what we are uh, trying to generate for them. Then there is the augmented reality, which basically what we are doing is not generating uh, parallel reality, but using, using the actual user's reality and adding to that reality uh, by means of digital enhancement, right? Uh, additional pieces of information, right? So you are seeing your reality with additional elements coming from the, uh, uh, the virtual environment, okay? And then there's the mixed, the mixed uh, reality, which is kind of, as, as, as you can imagine, a mixture between both of them. So at the end of the day, it uh, combines both uh, virtual and augmented reality, okay? Uh, from the virtual reality, it gets, uh, as we, you can see here, the, the virtual objects, right? Uh, from the augmented reality, it gets that these objects are uh, displayed on the real world, right? And not in a virtual environment. And what it adds, what it adds in top of, of that is that these objects mm, can interact not only with the, the user, let's say, but also with other physical objects which are in the real world, okay? Having said that, let's, let's try to do a fast review over the state of the art uh, in regards to virtual reality and augmented reality, okay? As you know, uh, hardware and software are constantly evolving. And it's, it's really, uh, uh, the, the evolution of hardware and software is really, 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 really fast. And as this hardware and software evolve, obviously these technologies uh, also uh, evolve and the possibilities also, also uh, evolve. It's true that uh, augmented reality and mixed reality requires a significantly different hardware than virtual reality. And in fact, that's the reason why virtual reality is pretty much more advanced than, than augmented uh, uh, reality. And it's also true that virtual reality, mainly because of this fact, has uh, received a lot of investment from uh, private companies out there. So it has evolved a lot during the last uh, few years. <coughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you or all of you will remember this. Uh, uh, this is the Google Cardboard. Uh, basically, it's uh, an initiative uh, that uh, Google took in order to uh, uh, push for uh, the virtual reality technology by providing users with this cardboard uh, they can use as a virtual reality device, just putting uh, their mobile phone inside of it, right? So this could be uh, understood as the the the, the late uh, the latest uh, or the initial push uh, in the latest in the latest years in order to evolve that technology. After that, of course, uh, lots of devices have appeared out there in the market, uh, more with more or less capabilities, but uh, uh, lots of them. Some of them. Uh, as you may imagine, already related with the gaming industry and so on, which is the one uh, pushing a lot in, in, in that sense. So having that, of course, next thing is, okay, we, all, okay, we already have devices, what about content, right? So as always happens with this kind of stuff, uh, at the same time, hardware and software evolves, so we have new devices, then uh, new content arises, right? I have put here some examples of uh, 360 videos, right? Uh, it's pretty interesting to see um, 
the, the number of visualizations uh, for, for these videos in order to understand that this is not anymore something like, okay, uh, uh, people or private companies investing in uh, trying things, trying new things, and so on. It's already being consumed by a lot of people, right? It's not only videos, it's also applications. We have three examples here of applications uh, uh, in the Google Play Store uh, that can be downloaded in any mobile phone and afterwards uh, used in uh, uh, VR devices. As you can see, again, lots of uh, uh, installs, so a lot of people interested in it. But not only that, also lots of reviews, which means people really like that and, and, and are in, in a position where they want to have more and, and review the different uh, applications available. And if you look at the average stars for at least for these three applications, you can see that they are quite quite, uh, quite good. So people is interested in that and is using it uh, more and more. Obviously, uh, this leads us to okay companies uh, putting their interest in, on on uh, on this area and investing on generating content for marketing purposes mainly or for other kind of purposes. Right? We have two examples here. First of all, being uh, uh, this Coca-Cola Santa's virtual uh, reality is late, right? Uh, so this was obviously uh, focused on marketing, and just you could, you could just use your device in order to get uh, a ride in uh, in Santa's uh, slide. Okay. Then the second one uh, being also really interesting, which is uh, comes from Volvo. They generated uh, a virtual reality application where you could uh, test drive one of the of their uh, latest uh, cars just being home using your uh, virtual reality device. So as you can imagine, there's lots of uh, use cases uh, that uh, can be tied to these uh, technologies, okay? Uh, something I want to, heal, to highlight, sorry, it's that the, 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 the fact that this um, experience of uh, uh, virtual reality world is, is totally immersive, right? In fact, uh, you have another example there which is uh, a 360 video that uh, uh, Disney uh, produced for uh, showing uh, kind of right with this, uh, uh, whatever it's called, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, through the desert, right? Uh, they put it in Facebook. You can see there's some numbers. Again, a lot of interest uh, in regard to that, okay? Other examples, uh, uh, we have lots of them in this area also, uh, live concerts. So it's, it's quite trendy right now, uh, um, recording those live concerts with these kind of devices you can see over there, uh, uh, and then providing applications in order to experience the concert from the inside. So you can sit there and you can stay close to uh, Paul McCartney and, and uh, see him playing, right? It's again, lots of uh, installs, lots of reviews, quite a good uh, average uh, stars. This one, and that's the one, the last one I'm, sh I'm sharing in terms of uh, examples. Um, this one comes from McDonald's. Um, and for me, it's reflecting something really, really interesting, which is, okay, again, virtual reality is something trendy, something new, uh, really immersive, attracting uh, probably a lot of, of young people. So what they did in this case was uh, try to uh, do a kind of a cardboard with the Happy Meal uh, box, right? and just uh, uh, generated kind of a ski app in order to, 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 to show it for, for, to, the, to the child uh, going to McDonald's restaurants. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. In terms of augmented reality and mixed reality, uh, what we see because of we, all, all, of, all of those examples we have seen up to now are, are, are virtual reality, obviously. Uh, in terms of augmented reality and mixed reality, what we can see is that Howard still somehow uh, limited. There are some specific devices which are uh, uh, hitting the market already, but uh, they still have some uh, uh, limitations. And the biggest one probably <laughs> is this one, right? So devices are still really, really, as the hardware is different, it's really expensive yet, uh, so, so not yet users, real users have been able to, to uh, in a massive way, to get access to them. Probably, uh, you will know, Microsoft HoloLens are, are uh, probably the, the device which, which is taking the lead in this area of, of uh, augmented uh, reality. And of course, probably after two or three years, we'll be talking at, uh, that this technology is at the same point as virtual reality and the level of adoption in terms of users is, is, is high. 
it's not only, only Microsoft, but all the uh, leaders in the, in the market are already working on uh, mixed uh, reality and augmented reality devices. You can see here Google, Apple, Sony, HTC, and even Facebook uh, are working on that. <clears throat> so as a summary of the state of the art, we can say that augmented reality, mixed reality have near-term feasibility for what we can see with this solar lens, which uh, as I saw, told you is the, the one leading uh, the market right now. It seems that we're really close to, to get to real uh, uh, users and with a, uh, a complete uh, functionality. And virtual reality is uh, definitely putting ahead uh, to customer readiness, right? <clears throat> so one, once we get to that point, one asks himself, okay, what, what can this do for enterprise companies, right? So first of all, well, what, what can it do or what will it do? Uh, first of all, it will transform definitely uh, the business models uh, uh, we have in, in every kind of company. It will also obviously create new industries. And finally, and the most important, it will connect in a more powerful way to our consumers. It's not that you have a, a two-dimensional video in a website. It's not that you have an app, a really interesting app. It's that you have an immersive experience uh, in a virtual reality environment. <clears throat> of course, new marketing channels will be created with virtual reality. Uh, our current uh, marketing channels are totally saturated, so it's, it's, it's even difficult to, to, to hear yourself as a brand uh, uh, in the current marketing channels. This virtual reality environment opens a huge uh, door to, uh, uh, to new marketing uh, experiences. <clears throat> Obviously, this will give a, a, a really different experience to the users, something they will, they will, they will not forget, uh, as I was saying, because you are interacting with them using several senses, not only uh, one of them. Also, um, it will boost somehow uh, uh, resource-driven teams. Uh, imagine, for instance, uh, you work uh, as a salesperson, you need to, uh, to uh, do demos of your product, your service to different clients, you need to move where they are, et cetera, et cetera. Imagine having a channel like this, like virtual reality, in order to do that remotely. So it will definitely change the way we work. <coughs> also improve operational efficiency. Um, we will see there afterwards several, several small use cases, but this will be used also for, and is being used uh, also for training, right? So training people to do better, do their job in a controlled environment where they can do mistakes uh, uh, and so on, right? <coughs> for instance here, uh, what we're gonna see now is several examples in, in, in the healthcare uh, uh, industry, okay? Um, so basically, it's, it's being used for, for uh, or there are some opportunities for using this kind of technologies for different areas. Some examples here, social anxiety or phobia, so you can treat people in a controlled way, in a controlled environment, so they can face uh, uh, these kind of problems uh, in a, a controlled way. Uh, as I was saying before, immersive training, uh, even pain mitigation, there is, there is uh, uh, one institute in, in, uh, in the US which is using virtual reality environments in order to uh, treat people uh, who are suffering uh, some kind of pains in order to make them relax and things like that. So there's lots of, if, if you just think, there's lots of, of, of possible uses. If we talk about the retail industry, uh, we are talking about remote shopping, uh, we are talking about try before you buy, so seeing uh, how one item uh, would fit on you even uh, without having to move to the, to the, to the actual shop. Uh, shopper education, so something, something like uh, training virtual mirrors, which is something that which, which is already there. So seeing something uh, on you even without having to, to, to test it. <clears throat> so these are some use cases, but also this also means there are lots of new business challenges uh, related to, to this, okay? First of all, uh, obviously building uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, or mixed reality uh, solutions takes time, takes a lot of time, okay? 
It requires uh, even higher collaboration of the development teams with the uh, UX teams because as the experience is really complete in terms of uh, what the user gets, obviously it needs to be designed really carefully and it need, you need to take a lot of time in order to, to, uh, to design it uh, this a lot more than with traditional channels like uh, web or, or mobile applications. One may think that, okay, virtual reality is about native headset development, right? So develop the, the, the native application for the specific device or family of devices you wanna, you wanna use. But may forget that uh, there's a lot of work to do in the enterprise backend. Right. So native headset development can be seen at the top of, of the iceberg, but there's a lot of stuff to be done here. <coughs> so what that means is that business systems need to be prepared for these new dis distribution channels. And there is a lot of things that need to be done and need to be considered in order to face uh, uh, the adoption of this new channel uh, uh, by a company. Okay? You have several examples here. So Obviously, manage, manage and provide a large amount of data, so all the information uh, related to virtual reality environments is normally heavy, so uh, the amount of data uh, you need to provide is really, really, really huge. Segmented and personalized, and personalized uh, data, so you need to customize the data or the, or the information you show for each of the users. Uh, reactive and provide unproactive data based on uh, what the user does. Real time and high speed, which is really, really, really important for this kind of uh, environments. <clears throat> On top of that, obviously, as the amount of data to, which, that is being used is huge, also the amount of, the amount of uh, uh, data uh, being captured for analytical purposes is huge. Uh, the complexity of the dashboards that you need to build in order to understand and, and be able to propose improvements uh, in that environment, again, is huge. <clears throat> um, so basically, uh, it's not only about, as I was saying, developing the, let's say, the front end, right, for the specific device you want to use. It's also about uh, developing all that stuff uh, on, the, on, the, on the back end. Let me um, just move forward, okay? So we have seen a little bit uh, the, the context, state of the art, uh, and which is the current situation in the market in regard to virtual reality. Uh, obviously talking about virtual reality, and not mixed reality and augmented reality, but just virtual reality, we could say that 2017 is the new 2007. Uh, uh, if we do a parallelism with uh, what these guys did with the, with the iPhone, where they basically were changing the paradigm, were changing uh, uh, everything in regard to uh, mobility. We honestly believe that uh, virtual reality is uh, a new channel uh, that will become bigger and bigger and bigger and more important in a, in a few next years. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna share with you now what we did uh, uh, in order to test uh, virtual reality and in, in, in order to build something uh, which obviously could be interesting for some of our, of our clients. So what we built is, uh, and what you have here, you have some screenshots, we'll see afterwards a uh, uh, little bit more detail. Uh, what we built basically is a, an application uh, thought to be like kind of a, a retail oriented, right? So that you get into a shop and you can get a different uh, a catalog of the different products, uh, look at them, uh, select one of them, buy it, etc. Right? Uh, obviously, the first thing we need is okay. What will we need? We will need to design, as we said before, uh, put a lot of effort and time in order to design it properly, right? So it's not about making it uh, nice. Uh, but making it usable, and usability when it comes to virtual reality becomes more and more and more complex, and much more complex than designing a, web a website or a mobile application, right? So what we did basically is use Liferay, Liferay DXP, uh, as a, a content management system in order to provide all the contents 
that afterwards would be consumed by uh, our virtual reality uh, application, right? That was our idea. Why? Why, why, why using LiveRay, right? So we defined a little bit uh, uh, which, which were the things that we needed at that moment in order to start the project, which things we believed we would need in order to evolve it into a much more complex solution, okay? And this is what, uh, what we came with, right? So first of all, we needed to uh, have a robust solution in order to become the, the backend of our, of our platform. We need full CMS system in order to host all the contents that we were going to show in, in uh, our application. And we needed that, that system also to, uh, to be modular and have an API we could use in order to get uh, uh, those contents dynamically and show them in, in our uh, virtual reality application, okay? That was enough for starting. But then, of course, uh, we wanted to, to evolve that initial prototype, and we, we, we knew that we would need additional staff. So we also saw that using uh, library would allow us to use uh, library's uh, security mechanisms, would allow us to have a uh, scalability, the needed scalability to be able to offer that solution to uh, large amounts of users, would allow us to uh, use uh, Things like audience targeting and campaigns, as we were using library as a CMS, and we were using the appropriate APIs in order to like, take advantage of these features already in uh, uh, in library, and also will give us some support for native uh, mobile development. Right. So um, uh, afterwards, how we will uh, uh, use that, and how we can use that in the future. Okay, it's not only about uh, virtual reality and about one single device. It's also about uh, being able to use one, to build one mobile app in order to consume the same contents using augmented reality devices, Internet of Things, wearables, whatever. So having library as a backend to, for for that allowed us to uh, be able to evolve our solution in all that senses. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is just share with you a short, short, really, really short video, just a few seconds, on which is the result of uh, what we built. I really encourage you to, afterwards, uh, the talk or whatever, we have, we have bought some, uh, some uh, virtual reality glasses. We have them there, so we can show you online the, the application, so you can test it and you can see how the experience is. But in any case, I had just prepared a video for you to, to see a little bit. Ah, oh, it's not being shown. Sorry. <laughs> My fault. Is it there? So as you can see, we're just getting into a virtual environment, looking like a shop, right? You can have, you can see all the products there in the shelf and so on. First thing we see is welcome video, which can be reproduced in order to see some examples on how to operate the, the, the application. So once you get in, we define it initially like this, defining the gender to select which, cat which catalog of products will you'll be uh, looking for. This is a slider we built and we collaborate a lot with, uh, with our digital experience team in order to define how it should work, which, mainly the interaction, so how, which is the movement or the actions that users should do in order to get from one product to the other. Then, of course, all the information we are seeing here is coming from library, the description and uh, all the characteristics of the product, the price, everything, right? This is interesting, this is just an example video, but the idea of that is that you can have an immersive experience by, I don't know, you are looking for boots in this case, so you could see a video where someone is wearing those boots and you can just go around and see how they fit and so on, right? And then obviously you should just buy the product. Okay, 
really short, I promised. Okay, so we're gonna see now a little bit of detail on how we, how we built that, okay? Which was the approach and, and how we built it. So, um, first of all, uh, basically the process of uh, 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 building the, the, the application and, and the, the, the parts of, of, of the application could be summarized with these three, three steps. Sorry. So first of all, we have an initial step. I will, I will give you more detail afterwards, which is uh, the assets pre-processing. So pre-processing pre the assets, which at the, end of, at the end of the day are the elements in our catalog, the boots, the back, whatever it is, right, that uh, we want to have, right? After that, obviously, using LiveRay as a headless CMS or just the CMS capabilities in order to store the information of all these, uh, of these assets, all these products, right? And then, obviously, building the client application in order to consume all that, all that content. Um, for the um, client application, we used Unity, uh, which is one of the engines available in the market. We tested several of them. Uh, we tested uh, Unreal Engine and CryEngine. We finally used Unity basically because of two things, one being the huge community they have behind, so it's really easy to get help uh, 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 if you need. And the other being uh, the simple learning curve it had, right? So this diagram shows a little bit the whole process, right? So basically, this would be the part of the pre-processing of the, of the assets. So how we get uh, the different images of the assets, build uh, of, the, of the items to be sold, build the, the, the asset and push it into LifeRay. And this, uh, then obviously it would, this would uh, be uh, the client application, where as I told you before, uh, we did a lot of uh, uh, user experience work in order to de design something which was usable and nice and, and friendly for the users. Uh, and then obviously we build the application in, in, uh, using Unity and we connect it to some uh, analytics uh, tools in order to get data of how users are, 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 are using it, right? Basically, uh, in, in these uh, VR environments, uh, you have to, three ways of, uh, of, uh, having, uh, of building items to, to be put in your, in your catalog, let's say, right? You can build 3D objects uh, created with any kind of, uh, of modeling tool. You can build objects based on a set of images. And in fact, uh, this is the approach we used. Uh, basically, we used that because it, uh, you saw in the video that, that you have the, the boots or the back or whatever just uh, moving. So it was pretty, pretty realistic. If you just try to model it with 3D, with any 3D software, it won't be that realistic. So what we did is just get a bunch of images from all the different angles and put them together in order to have the most realistic experience as possible, right? And then on top of that, obviously, you can also have a more uh, traditional objects like videos, images, and, and, and so on, right? So as I said, we, got, we went with this approach in order to have more, the more realistic experience as possible. Giving a little bit more detail on this assets pre-processing. So basically what we did is we got the images, uh, we, we developed some, some uh, scripts in order to uh, build kind of a sprite with all the different images in order to, for the system to be efficient and, and the object not to be too heavy so that everything runs smoothly. Because uh, if you remember, all the information is being retrieved in an online way from LifeRay, so it needs to be really lightweight and, and run in a very uh, smooth way. With all that information and with some uh, metadata we needed to add to, add to, the, to the object, we built these uh, assets, which at the end of the day are pushed into LifeRay in order to, to get the contents there, right? So LifeRay, um, in LifeRay also what we did is uh, having all that, met that metadata in order to be facilitate uh, searching. We have categories, we'll see afterwards what we, what we built for the, for the demo. Uh, all the information that needs to be displayed, like descriptions, prices, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, and uh, data routing with the directions needed to, to access it. That's because of one thing we'll see here, right? This is just an example of the vocabularies and categories we built in order to, to categorize things uh, uh, in LifeRay. 
uh, categorize these different assets. So we use two different uh, vocabularies, user sets and, and close, and then the categories you can see there and you have already seen in the, in the video. And then what we basically did, did is for each element of the catalog, uh, have one journal article with all those items uh, on it in order to be able to classify it and, and define where to show it, right? Uh, you can see here we had one thing called asset bundle file. Basically, this is the, uh, what we are storing there is a URL where the asset bundle, which is the item used by the VR application in order to, 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 to display the content, uh, is stored. Um, basically, what we are doing is using uh, library JSON uh, API in order to retrieve content from uh, the client application using Unity, get it from library, and just uh, displaying in the, in the application. So in this way, we just built some services, some uh, services on top of a library's API in order to be able to afterwards use security, uh, personalization, and all that stuff uh, that can be offered by the, by the CMS. So basically, uh, the device makes an API call to get all that information, and as you can see there, uh, the asset itself is not stored in library, but what we store in library is a URL, uh, and the asset is, store, is it's stored in Amazon, in Amazon S3. That's just for a matter of performance, right? So we did a uh, small uh, trick that whenever we create an asset uh, in library, automatically, automatically we store uh, that asset in, in S3 and just uh, keep the URL in order to provide it to, to the client application for things to be, to, be, to be faster and more efficient, okay? That's what we did, and I just wanted to share with you next steps and next things we are working on in order to evolve this, uh, this prototype. <clears throat> One thing we are working on also is uh, chatbots. Uh, in fact, we have a, quite an interesting solution in regard to, to chatbots, and one uh, action we are having now is trying to integrate both things. So trying to uh, allow you not only to be in a virtual reality environment, but also being able to interact with the chatbot in order to get things, to look for products or things like that. <clears throat> Secondly, as I said before, our library uh, user management and authentication, nowadays it's just one single user who can test it, it's a prototype. The idea would be, as I said before, uh, being able to authenticate uh, into, into library in order to get profit of all those features offered by library, okay? Uh, like personalization. Um, then automate the assets loading in the server. Uh, basically, we are doing uh, in the backend right now. So we wanted to offer a uh, user interface in order to be able to just drag and drop uh, items to the, to the server and, and increase the, the, the amount of items available in the, in the catalog. Okay, um, uh, make it viable to, to, to use library as a server for these different VR applications uh, simultaneously. So having a common catalog which can be used uh, for, by different applications and have more, for instance, thematic oriented applications, okay? And then obviously implement the buying action from, uh, from the glasses which now is like uh, adding items to the to the basket, but it's not completing the the, the whole the whole thing about uh, buying, procedure, paying, etc. etc. Okay. And um, yes, I think that's all. Okay, <laughs> I think that's all. So thank you very much. I will be more than pleased to answer any question. Uh, Well, in fact, it's built uh, for, uh, so, so we demo it showing a mobile device. So we, uh, uh, an Android mobile device. We have it there, uh, we can show anybody. But it's just deployed in, a, in an Android uh, mobile device, which is plugged in into a virtual uh, uh, reality uh, Googles. Right? At the end of the, way, the other day, this is one of the good points of virtual reality and the state of the art where we are, which is, okay, you just need one mobile device and one of these glasses, uh, which nowadays you can get for really, really, really cheap. 
uh, and that's all. So it's really easy to get uh, to, to, to real users nowadays because it's really cheap for them to, to get those devices. Did you begin development on 6.2 LifeRay? 